Hi, it's Stephanie Everett and welcome back to the Suburban Chateau. Today we're going to start off a new series of videos for 2022 and the topic is going to be collecting. Now I have many collections in my home, I'm sure you do as well, and I really enjoy collecting with my daughters. We often go to antique stores, go to thrift shops, Goodwill, all of those things, and we're always looking for little treasures. My youngest, she loves the vintage clothing. My oldest, you've seen her with the typewriters and the typewriter collection. For me, I tend towards glassware and china and things for the home. So you'll sort of see me gravitate towards those types of things. So today we're gonna to start off our collecting series with some interesting glassware. Now, when I approach collecting, it is always from the heart and not the head. I am never collecting for monetary reasons. That's just not something that motivates me. If I collect something, it's because I think it's beautiful or maybe I have an emotional connection to it, something from the family, something that was collected in the family. And that is certainly the case um, in today's collection that we're gonna be talking about. Growing up, my mom and our family, my mom collected um, a beautiful type of glassware called Whitehall it was made by the Colony Glassware Company and she collected it in a green color and it was beautiful glassware. We had water glasses, we had juice glasses. She was very proud of those. Little sherbets, some iced tea tumblers. She had beautiful pictures in the Whitehall pattern. And it was very popular, especially in the 1950s and the 60s. And my mom was setting up housekeeping in the late 50s and early 60s when we were little. And so she was collecting that Whitehall, which was very, very popular. And she was able to get it in little sets and she would save up. She would save up for four sherbets or four tumblers or four water glasses. And it's just something that was a big part of our family. When I was getting, just a few years ago, I would frequently find some of the Whitehall pattern for her in maybe a different color. She had the green and I got her a couple replacements one time in white. And um, she just kept them as like an extra, in case she would break something, she would have the extra in the white. But um, one day we had seen, I knew there was a peach color that exists in the Whitehall pattern, but I really didn't know too much about it. And Grace and I were staying at my mom's condo in the Outer Banks. And I opened up a cupboard and there were nine or 10 of uh, the beautiful um, colony glass Whitehall tumblers that look just like this. And that's called um, a peach color. And I just got really, really excited and I wondered where those came from. So it was really a mystery. What I didn't know is my parents had just purchased that condo and some of the items got left in the condo from the previous owner. So she must have had a, a nice set of the peach tumblers. And I always thought if I was gonna collect something, I really thought that would be beautiful glassware. And I have other pressed glass in my collection, but I just really, really love that peach color. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna to start to look a little bit for that peach color. But what I didn't know is there's quite a history behind all of this. Um, sometimes it's called cube or cubist glass. Sometimes it's called the colony, the Whitehall, but they're all descendants of the Fostoria American pattern. And so I've done sort of a deep dive into the origins of the cube patterns, which would be the Fostoria American pattern. And then some of the other companies, these are all what I would consider lookalikes that I've collected over the years. So I'll show you a little bit about what I have, and then we'll do a little bit of a deep dive into what the patterns are. And again, as I say, I collect for looks. So for me, it was the pink, the peach color, and the look of it that reminded me of the colony Whitehall that we grew up with. And and that's not a collector's point of view, that's just a, you know, a mom, simple mom's point of view. But um, that's where my collection of this glassware started. Now, I'll tell you a little bit, almost all of my pieces do come from Indiana Glass Company. Most of the Fostoria American pattern, which you will definitely see if you go to an antique store, are all in the crystal or a clear color. And all of these lookalikes come from the concept of the Fostoria American pattern. So we'll talk a little bit about the Fostoria company and a little bit about the person who designed the America pattern as well for Fostoria. 
Then we do come up on another glass company called the Jeanette Glassworks Incorporated. And they're really interested, interesting too, because it's from Jeanette PA. And that's not far from where we live in Hollidaysburg and a little closer to my hometown of Indiana, Pennsylvania. So Jeanette, not far away from our roots um, in Western PA. But I do think I might have a piece of Jeanette uh, glass. And if you hear the word cube, or cubist, that always um, is a reference to the Jeanette Glass Company. Now, Fostoria is always American, and then the colony is usually Whitehall. Now, a lot of my pieces are a hybrid. Later on, the, the company, which, which was called Lancaster Colony Company, was the parent colony, uh, parent of Colony Glass, and they purchased Fostoria years later and many of the molds that were used originally for the Fostoria American pattern were then used in the Colony Whitehall pattern. And then that was called American Whitehall. Almost all of my pieces are American Whitehall. And I'll tell you a little bit about the difference and we'll kind of deep, sort of have a deep dive into the differences here. One of my pieces I think might be from the Jeanette company. And this is this little, uh, and I might be wrong, so please you tell me if I'm incorrect on this. It's just a little fruit dish. And um, the reason I think it might be from Jeanette Glassworks is because it has a slightly different color. And it's more of a peachy pink or an orange pink. And it's a little bit harder to match this shade. And when you set it down with my other pieces, it picks up the light in a totally different way. So. I suspicion from some of the research that I'm doing that this is a Jeanette cube or cubist pattern, which is a little bit different than the colony. Now, as I said, most of the pieces that I own are from Indiana Glass, American Whitehall. So that would mean it would have influences of Fostoria because they used some of their uh, molds when they were making this finally and especially mine are all later 1980s they're not that old um, so for sure I know that my iced tea tumblers are from the American Whitehall peach collection so this is definitely peach it's sometimes referred to as pink but it's really considered a peach color um, and then I believe my pictures are both American Whitehall and um, they are also from the peach collection. So I believe my tumblers and my pitcher match. This is a 51 ounce pitcher and a 14 ounce footed iced tea tumbler. And I am fairly sure that my candy dish is also from American Whitehall Peach. It has a signature on the bottom. The mark on there is definitely the Whitehall pattern and also the lid on my Topper has the serrated edge, and I know that that is a hallmark of the American Whitehall. Along the way, before I started to collect the peach, I had looked at a lot of different colors in the colony. I looked at the light blue, I looked at the Riviera blue, I wasn't sure I wanted the green. I didn't think the green would match the things I have, but I looked really carefully at the ruby. Now the ruby is a beautiful, this is just a little um, footed cup that I have here. And I saw this with a beautiful punch set. And I thought about collecting this, but it's really hard to find it in nice shape. Now, this one I collected was only a couple bucks because you'll see if I get real close with a picture that this one is, the ruby is worn off. So it's not well preserved. And I thought, eh, I didn't want something that didn't look as nice or was hard to find a nice version. So when I was thinking about what I was gonna collect, I was tempted to start collecting the ruby. And in fact, I grabbed a couple pieces these were like a buck a piece at a local antique store. But then I turned my attention towards the peach because I really thought it was beautiful. So um, first thing I ever had was the pitcher and then we've added the cream and sugar. Girls have helped me find some things along the way too when they've been thrifting. The Fostoria Glass Company was incorporated in 1887 in West Virginia. The founders were drawn to the town of Fostoria, Ohio, due to a boon in natural gas production at that time. When the natural gas boom ended just a few years later in 1891, the company moved to Moundsville, West Virginia. Fostoria Glass Company produced a variety of pressed glass styles and many of their glass patterns are considered part of the Depression glass movement. Fostoria's American pattern, number 
2056 was released in 1915 and quickly became Fostoria's most well-known and sought-after pattern. The American 2056 was mostly made into tableware and glassware and was made from Fostoria's high-quality crystal glass. Fostoria continued to produce this pattern until 1988 and almost all of Fostoria American pieces were only produced in the crystal glassware. They were also the inspiration for all the other lookalike patterns. The Jeanette Bottle Works began operation in Jeanette, Pennsylvania and became the Jeanette Glass Company in 1898. They produced a variety of early utility glassware in the early 1900s. They were one of several major producers of depression glass from a period that lasted from 1928 to 1938. The hex optic or the cube or cubist pattern was designed by Mr. Philip Eberling, who also designed the Fostoria American pattern. The cubist pieces were machine made without any expensive touches or finishing touches, where the Fostoria pattern was handmade and then finished by hand. The cubist pattern was mainly produced in the clear, the pink, and the green colors and was only in production from 1929 to 1933. Many of the Whitehall pieces are misidentified in antique stores and on eBay as Jeanette Glass. Jeanette Glass Company originated in the early 1900s near Dunkirk, Indiana, and produced a variety of pressed glassware, lamps, and decorated glassware. By 1957, the Lancaster Lens Corporation acquired a controlling interest in the company and then changed its name to the Lancaster Glass Corporation. In 1961, the company further refined their name to the Lancaster Colony Corporation, which included several glassware companies as well as other manufacturers. The Whitehall pattern was first produced by the Colony Glass Corporation, and years later, when the Lancaster Colony Corporation acquired Astoria Glass, the original molds for the American pattern were merged into the American Whitehall patterns. Now, while I was doing my research, especially on the Whitehall pattern, I found that it was very, very difficult to try to discern the difference between the Fostoria pattern, the Jeanette pattern, and the Whitehall pattern, especially when I first started out. I noticed that when I was searching in antique stores to especially look at the Fostoria and the Whitehall, they were many times mislabeled. Many of them were labeled as Jeanette that were definitely the Colony Whitehall. And I just found there was a lot of misinformation in the antique store vendors and throughout eBay. I think it was very difficult to tell the patterns apart. So I turned to the internet. I had a lot of trouble finding information on the internet as well. However, I stumbled across an amazing website that was produced by Julie M. Noyes, and it's called the Fostoria American Line 2056 webpage. And I'm going to put a link in my description to her webpage. On her webpage, she also has a PDF that you can purchase. And I purchased this and it really helped me to clear up some of the differences between the patterns. She gives great pictures that she's taken herself. She gives all the necessary clues for any Fostoria, Whitehall or American Whitehall collector to be able to identify the various patterns. And some of it is minutia you know, the top of the crystal candy glass is square shaped with a circle and it's very, very detailed. So I would highly recommend if you're interested in these patterns at all to check out her website. It is an invaluable resource. So I hope you learned a little bit about the Fostoria influence on Jeanette glass and the White Hall and um, how beautiful these glasses can be and very durable and great everyday glassware. I hope you'll join us for our other videos in this collection series. Please feel free to comment. If you've noticed I made a mistake on any of the information, I would love to know. This is a really difficult topic. And even to get as far as I did in my research took quite a lot of deep diving into some of the hallmarks of the different styles. And believe me, it is not easy to tell the different patterns apart. 
the only luck I've had with the Fostoria is that I know that they're all clear and that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm really not looking for a Fostoria, but these are all the Fostoria lookalikes. So if you find I've made an error, please make sure you mention it in the, the comments and I'll try to do my best. And I think I'm gonna make some more videos about this very topic as we find other pieces. Um, I know one of the things I would like to find is the cake plate. And uh, just and I want to just look and learn more about this pattern because I think it's so interesting how these patterns have influenced each other and have been the inspiration for other patterns. And I just find collecting fascinating. So I hope you'll enjoy and bear with me as I research through some of these projects. But uh, hopefully you found something today that you can take along when you're thrifting next and you can look at that cubist piece and say, hey, that looks like a colony piece or um, a Jeanette piece or whatever it is. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed our little trip for some glassware today and come back and join us again on the Suburban Chateau. Special thanks to Julie M. Noyes, my mom, Nancy Laird, and my daughter, Sarah Everett, for helping me research this topic.